For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So all over the world, uh, hunger levels are rising. Um, yet in some parts of the world, they are dramatically declining. Uh, one of these countries is Nicaragua. And Nicaragua has achieved, uh, has achieved this through food sovereignty. Uh, food sovereignty is a radical practice, um, which gives people access to healthy, affordable food. Not only a healthy, affordable food, but food that is uh, culturally appropriate. This food sovereign model really prioritizes a harmonious relationship with the earth. Um, it's not just about exploiting the land, but about making sure that we regenerate the land as well. When we talk about food sovereignty, um, we have to talk about land redistribution. And this is kind of the key to the whole, uh, to the whole project, um, particularly in places like Nicaragua. Um, it's a revolutionary demand in essence, because it, it redistributes the land um, to the most oppressed in society to make sure that they have access to grow their own food and continual access to healthy food. So by redistributing land, you're actually um, completely restructuring all of society and moving um, much of the um, country's production away from corporations into the hands of local producers. Um, so you could say that food sovereignty is inherently an anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist um, demand. It can, in fact, form the, the cornerstone for many revolutions and has done in, in Nicaragua. Um, from 79, um, agricultural reforms have really been at the, uh, at the heart of the Sandinista movement. Of course, we had the 16 years of neoliberal governance between 1990 and 2006. But in 2007, when the Sandinista came back to power, they actually enshrined food sovereignty um, into law in Nicaragua. So this meant that um, it wasn't just a sort of a cultural practice amongst just indigenous people and amongst uh, the, um, the working class, but now it's actually being supported uh, by the government from the top. Um, and this is what makes it very different to many other food sovereign models in the world, because the government is actually subsidizing many of the rural farmers and small landholders in Nicaragua. Um, so here in the context of Nicaragua, um, within uh, this long-term struggle for the construction of uh, popular sovereignty, which also includes the construction of food sovereignty, there's been um, a lot of emphasis, especially in recent years, to um, what we call here massify or basically implement agroecology. Um, agroecology being understood as one of the key pillars to be able to achieve food sovereignty. Um, agroecology is considered a, as a model of agriculture that is um, basically the opposite to the model of agriculture that was promoted through the Green Revolution. So um, through the Green Revolution, a type of uh, agriculture that basically uh, replaced a lot of uh, technologies and use of chemicals that were used in war. Um, so um, Green the green revolution technologies, the heavy use of chemicals, monoculture, et cetera, is something that of course, um, Nicaragua has not been immune to. However, there's been uh, a lot of efforts, um, both here as a product of the Sandinista revolution, the current Sandinista government, as well as our popular uh, organizations. Um, there's been a lot of efforts to implement agroecology. Um, at the national level, there's a legal framework for agroecology. Um, so there's a law 765 specifically on agroecology that was passed with the current government um, in 2011, which follows up on the very important um, food and nutritional security and sovereignty law that was passed in 2009. Um, and paired with that are dozens and dozens of social programs uh, that are promoted to um, promote this different kind of uh, agriculture and agriculture that um, importantly is not based on um, 
things like monoculture, being dependent on chemical inputs, fertilizer, et cetera, but it's really based on peasants having land, which here in Nicaragua they do, thanks to the agrarian reform, which is a product of the San Anisa revolution, um, but also um, being more autonomous in the model of food production, um, rescuing ancestral and traditional knowledge, um, and pairing that with new ideas, new technologies that might come out of allies in academia or within the, the organizations. And it's also very much paired with other kinds of methodologies that are contrary to or uh, not used in the dominant capitalist system. So for example, um, the importance of centralizing peasant knowledge. So within agroecology, there's a big emphasis on uh, put on a methodology that's called the peasant to peasant methodology, which is basically a methodology of sharing knowledge that exists on current, uh, currently exists on farms um, by uh, peasant farmers, both men and women, but highlighting the, the important role that women pay in, play in agriculture and sharing that horizontally um, in, uh, in communities and uh, over time spreading that throughout the territories. Um, another really important thing that's, uh, that's currently taking place right now within agroecology here in Nicaragua is uh, the is in the area of training. So both the government uh, ha, as well as popular organizations like the ATC have very, very active training programs. Um, the government has a number of uh, training programs in the countryside that are completely free for anyone that wants to participate that makes certain kinds of, that makes education available to um, the working class and the peasant class uh, that uh, is very much inaccessible in a lot of places in the world, but is, is here is very accessible. And their agroecological models of food production are being promoted and implemented. And also very importantly, uh, popular organizations like the ATC, along with the organizations, other organizations of Bolivia Campesina also have their own training programs. <laughs> When it comes to feeding the people, the only real solution is food sovereignty because the US has been weaponizing food to then starve populations and cause further dissent, as, as we've seen now in Cuba. And this is where Cuban crisis really stems from, is, is the 60-year-long US blockade, uh, which starved the people and then caused these, these shortages uh, in, in supermarkets and markets around Cuba. So I think this is what's been so successful for Nicaragua and why even in spite of the sanctions against it, it's never struggled to meet the basic demands of people, which are food, water, housing, sanitation. Uh, the Nicaraguan Sandinista government since 2007 has, has put those at the core of its ideology, um, not luxuries and not, uh, not, and not safe profits, but, but the people. <laughs> <laughs>